Okay. <clears throat> So let's find a comfortable seated position. So I'm using a chair that's like a dining room chair just to kind of um, level the playing field. I know everybody at home has kind of different chairs. So um, I wanted to try the class using my dining room chair because it's different size. The back of it hits me differently. You see I'm putting blocks under my feet because my feet don't like touch the floor with this. So. Um, these are things you can do to make the chair fit you better. If you want to elevate your feet on blocks, it can be a nice addition to your seated position. Um, so just, you can always kind of customize your props to fit you. We'll just start like we always do, just coming into the body with awareness. So take a moment to just arrange your body, position your shoulders in line with your hips. Try not to use the back of the chair if you don't have to for support. You might not know where your head is in relationship to your spine. One thing you can do just to kind of get familiar is place your hand on the back of the neck and adjust your skull forward and back. And you can tell by the feeling of your hand against your neck. When we've misaligned the neck and thrown the head forward, there's a definitely different feeling against the hand than when the head is right above the skull or spine. So you can, if you don't exactly know where your skull is, that's one way to kind of check it out. Shoulders in line with hips, close the eyes, make sure your hands are restful. And just start to tune into the parts of your body that are either touching the chair or touching the floor. And give these areas of your body permission to really meet those surfaces without any resistance. And then you might even start to feel that the feet are starting to grow little roots and connect more deeply. Your seat against the chair seat is starting to, I like to use the word merge with the seat. Become really kind of aware on a more granular level of your sitting bones, where exactly you are weight bearing down on the sitting bones. Hopefully it's close to the centers. And then the parts of your body that are considered grounded or anchor points, but not touching the floor or the chair, such as the shoulders, drop the shoulders, drop the jaw, lower jaw, let the tongue rest the floor of the mouth. And even your gaze pointed down is supporting that sense of groundedness and foundation. And it's only when we've established all of that that we can start to sense some lightness along the spine. So maybe every time you breathe in, imagine you're filling a small balloon between the sets of vertebrae. And when you exhale, don't let the balloons deflate. Just imagine each time you breathe in, you're adding a little sip of air to the balloon. Relax the abdomen. As you're ready, joining the hands together in front of the heart, just bowing toward your own heart, your own inner teacher. And when you're ready, lifting your head, releasing your hands, and letting your eyes gently come open. Welcome. Welcome, Shar. So we're gonna get started with a series of forward bends. So that's where the second chair, so Shar, we're gonna use the second chair today. The first one we're gonna do is with a wide spacing between your feet. So I'm gonna keep using my blocks under my feet, but that's because I'm trying to keep my feet really grounded. If I don't use the blocks, my heels are kind of floating and I feel a little grippy in my groins and my hips, which is not conducive to resting. 
So something I wanted to point out with the chair that I've never mentioned until today, I don't believe, is when we're using the chair, the second chair to rest the head, you can always use the back of the chair. So if you feel like the seat is too low, well, option one is you can elevate the seat with a number of props that you have at home, blankets, pillows. Option two is just turning the chair around using the, the back of the chair for support. And of course, we all have different chair backs, so that might not be your best option, but I just wanted to mention it. So you're gonna have your feet wide enough that you have space for your torso to come lower than your thighs if possible. If not, we're still gonna work with a wide position. And you're just gonna sit back enough on the chair with your buttocks that you're not gonna do a somersault out of it. So you wanna feel a good amount of, of support underneath your seat. And then you might include your arms as part of your foundation for the forehead. You might just tuck the forearms under you. You might bring your hands to the chair and rest the head directly on the chair back. So because I have this material that's very hard against my head, I'm going to put a blanket over the, the bar here just so I have a little more comfort. But the reason we get the head down is so that the nervous system is really kind of thrown into a parasympathetic state. When we're not as considerate, the nervous system for a lot of us is in a, a kind of more anxious uh, upregulated state. So we're just doing our best to soothe the nervous system. And when we do that, then the breath starts to become regulated. The body becomes more supple, more kind of conducive to the reception of the poses. And you might begin on kind of a higher level with your head. And you might notice after being in the pose for some time that you need to lower the head. So you're gonna just start to bring the head down. Yep, you can keep your head down, yep. And then if you notice you need to go lower, of course you wanna adjust yourself so that you can do that. The arms, if you're not using them for head support, just try to put them in a position that is really restful, especially considering the shoulders, which tend to kind of be hypervigilant and kind of always on duty unless you really set them off duty. So put the shoulders in a really restful position away from the earlobes. And breath by breath, you're just gonna try to move through the layers of the onion. So we have tension layers that we move through. If you have trouble with the compaction in the abdominal area, you can always put a blanket or even a pillow on your lap and create some support and space there. And you'll be in this forward bend, just another minute. So make sure you're in a pose that's not under or overwhelming. Your edge, your physical edge is a moving target. So we can't just set it and forget it. We have to really, it demands presence to be right at your physical edge, not over or underwhelmed. Let the pose help you move into a few more exhalations that become more thorough. It's another way we can help the nervous system quiet down by finishing the exhales. All the stale air goes out. So when you're ready, you're gonna inhale and start to lift yourself up out of it. We're gonna move this pose to each side, which will give you a different experience of sensation in the back body and other parts of the body. And we're gonna start by moving the chair to the left so that the right side of the body can, the right lower back especially, will have a nice opening. So move your chair and again, you can work with the taller side or the lower side. You can start in kind of an upright position. You might grab the chair and help yourself turn using the chair. It's a lot easier when you're putting together a forward bend and a twist to start with the twist in an upright way and then bend forward. 
So you can adjust the chair. It might be right under your forehead. You might push the chair farther and just have your head hanging and bring it a little lower. So you can always kind of customize the poses to where they really feel perfect for you. So one thing you'll notice here when you're folding forward is that your right hip might be kind of pulling with you, kind of rotating off to the left. So just see if you can imagine someone's grabbing your right hip and they're just holding it there. So you have it kind of resisting away from the shoulder line. So you're kind of increasing the stretch to the side body that way. So instead of letting that right hip rotate forward as it wants to, you're just kind of rotating it back toward the back of the chair that you're sitting on. And you might notice after a while that you can move the chair a little bit farther to the left if you need that. You might also notice again that you're going to come lower with your head. So you guys can continue where you are. My head is lifted so that you can hear me. It would be really muffled if I tried to teach from a forward bend where my head is buried in something. And play with some bigger inhales. Making those little muscles that sit between the side ribs more elastic, more stretchy, which helps us breathe better. Meanwhile, getting a really deep left hip massage up into that ball and socket joint. Maybe three more breaths here. Always coming up on an inhale. So that's going to protect the length of the spine that you really kind of drew upon in that last pose. And then you're going to move your setup over to the right. One thing I forgot to mention with the first side is that it's good to have contact with the thigh that you're aligning your torso over. So if that doesn't happen directly, you might again use something like a blanket or a pillow to make that, uh, to fill that gap between your torso and your thigh. The reason being is that it pushes the breath into the back body and we get this really nice um, prana, which is the word for breath and energy in yoga. We get that moving into the back body where oftentimes it doesn't get there when we're not practicing yoga. It's a healthy thing to do for our lungs. So go ahead and find your first placement. And again, you're just going to consider the, the left hip, so the one you're kind of lengthening away from, like someone's grabbing it and holding it. So don't let it peel away from the chair and kind of follow that sweeping side, side body, resist it away from the shoulder line. So you're just kind of holding open a space in your body, letting the breath spill in. And ways to deepen here to continue moving to the side and to continue lowering. And you don't have to, but it's how you go deeper when your body asks for more. One way we know that is the mind starts to wander. We're getting bored because we've moved through those first few layers of the onion. So the forward bends are particularly quieting because they put the spine in the position it was in in utero, the single curve, the position we had before we learned to walk, the position we had before we learned how to use language to describe our feelings. So we're really kind of thrown back into experiencing our world on a sensory level. 
So it can be very brain quieting to do forward bends. The thing to watch out for is that we don't become sluggish or dull. Those can be side effects of forward bends. We're not adding the wise actions in the body. We're just kind of slumped over like rag dolls. That's not what we're trying to do. So use your breath, use your attention, and those will help you stay alert in the pose. And we can be quiet in the brain and alert at the same time. Just two more breaths. See if you can really empty those breaths. And again, you're just going to use your next inhale to lift yourself up and out of the twist facing center. We are going to do one more forward bend, which is the knees together, feet together, the child's pose version. We are going to attempt to put the head down. So you're probably going to want to keep that chair. I'm still using my blocks. You can feel free to try this if you want to just see what it's like to elevate your feet. So knees together, feet together, that's going to help you connect chest and thighs. But again, feel free to use a blanket to make that connection if it doesn't happen on your own or to, again, if you have discomfort in the abdomen, you'll want to add some support there. So I'm going to turn my chair around. I know for this one, I, I need my head a little bit lower. I hope it doesn't block your view, but that's what I need. But you figure out what you need to get your head down. And one option is to skip the second chair. This might work for some of you better than the chair. Put your elbows on your thighs, join your hands in prayer position and then rest your head against your thumbs. So that can be a nice solution if you're having trouble connecting with the chair. Otherwise, we always have the back of the chair to work with. So choose your own adventure. We're gonna stay a full minute. This is another one where we get a lot of access to our deepest exhale. So there's two obvious ways to stay really kind of to keep the mind kind of shepherding the, the mind to presence, which is the awareness of breath and sensation. But another one is imagery, so using your mind's eye to imagine your body. So imagine your spine. And every time that you exhale, feel the tailbone, just imagine the tailbone gently tugging away from the skull. Last three breaths. And when you come through the next exhalation, again, bring yourself up on the in-breath. Make sure you're kind of gripping the stomach muscles to support the spine coming back up. You're not just rolling up. You can put a lot of strain on your back to just do that without the engagement of the abdominals. And so I'm going to, for the next piece, I'm going to turn my view. So you don't have to move your setup necessarily, but I'm going to turn so you can see me kind of sideways. This is another second chair setup. So what we're going to be doing is working with a little bit of a hip opener. We're going to be propping to begin with the left foot on the seat of the chair. So there's a couple of things about that. You have full control how far that chair seat is from your body. The closer it is, the harder it's gonna be, the farther away it is, the more mild it'll be. You have full control if you need to elevate the foot, that's gonna be more challenging hip if you elevate the foot. If you need a little more going on in the, in the hip, you're gonna elevate the foot. Um, if you find the chair seat is too high, 
I would first recommend just putting it farther away from you and seeing if that is the remedy. And if not, you're gonna do the version where we don't use a second chair and you cross over your shin with the right leg extended. So you have options, you always have options. If you have this cold metal surface or something that's uncomfortable for your left foot, put that blanket there or add something that will make it softer or less cold and whatever you need to make it more comfortable. Okay, so we are gonna kind of hinge forward the hips. We won't be able to get the head down, but we're just gonna try to, when we don't get the head down, we just still wanna make sure the neck is not in some weird position that causes strain. So you're gonna just put your neck into the, the position that kind of follows or is consistent with the rest of the spine. So if you're able to sit forward with your hands on the chair seat, just try to align your neck so that you sense it's consistent with the rest of the spine. And then close your eyes because the eyes do tend to kind of drag us around. So close your eyes to kind of keep that alignment in your neck. With your hands down, make sure there's enough pressure in the seat of the chair, in your hands, sorry, that your shoulders aren't munching on your ears. Okay, so put your put nice weight into your hands. So hips are tricky because they, they have these reflexive contractive habits. So we, we can't just enter the hip opener and then leave right away. We have to wait for those reflexes, those grips to initially, that initially appear there to just kind of start to fall away. So after about 30 seconds, those reflexes start to let go. And we'll spend another minute just kind of breathing into that hip space, noticing what sort of tension patterns are there, what kind of resistance you're meeting. Notice other parts of the body that are responding here as well. And again, watch that edge. It's a moving target. So you might notice you're, you're getting a little dull. You might need to increase Sensation, kind of hinging a little deeper is one way. Sliding the foot a little farther to the right is another way. Elevating the foot, bringing the chair closer. Those are all things you can do if you need to turn the dial up. Now you're gonna just inhale and gently rise up. We're gonna keep this leg, keep working with this leg, but after a hip opener, we wanna straighten the leg. So if you're working with your foot down, I can't tell some of you, but if, if you are working with your foot on the floor, you'll just extend your leg and have both heels on the floor. If you have the chair, you're gonna have your foot and lower leg propped up on the chair. So what we're gonna do is just kind of grab the edges of the chair you're sitting on, roll your shoulders back, move your shoulder blades in, pull your left toes toward you. So you're really getting that nice flexion that kind of engages your quadriceps and straightens your leg nicely. And then any amount that you can, just kind of hinge forward. So what I mean by hinge is rather than rounding out your low back, the way we hinge is we tilt the pelvis forward. It doesn't change the lower, lower back. And then make sure your face didn't go flying out 10 feet in front of you. You still have your skull in line with your spine. I don't know if you can see my hands, but I'm trying to keep my fingertips on the chair and keep my shoulders back. So let your breastbone really be the most forward part of the front body, not your chin, not your eyeballs, not your face. And inhale and come out of it. All right. So we're going to step down with the left leg. Same thing, second side. However, our hips are usually very different. For me, I've always had a tighter left hip. No matter what I do, left hip is tighter. Um, and you could have something like that as well. You might have it change. 
Um, some people have their left hip tight one week, their right hip tight one week. So do you have to see about it with fresh eyes? We can't just kind of set it up like we always do. We're always keeping our practice fresh this way. So you're gonna see what you need for the right hip side. The distance of the chair, remember, you can elevate the foot. You can move that chair closer to the left. Sorry, not the chair, move the foot closer to the left. That's gonna increase the amount of um, hip opening you're doing. That being said, you can also slide the foot farther to the right to minimize or to decrease the amount. <clears throat> and then you'll add in the, the hands, prop them up on the chair, add some weight to your shoulders are moving down, not up. Aligning your neck, closing your eyes. Visualizing the space of the right hip. Breath swirling around there. Because we know we're still waiting out reflexes, just focus on the quality of your breath smoothness, the depth, make the breath more satisfying. Sometimes we do shallow little breaths. They aren't very satisfying. They're not very settling to the nervous system either. So just smooth, slow, steady. And just check in if you need more or you need less. Always trying to stay present with what we're doing. Last couple of breaths here. Remember to use an inhale as you lift yourself up. We're gonna work with a straight leg and a forward bend. So remember if you're using the floor instead of the chair, you can have just that right heel prop. The left foot you'll probably need to keep underneath the knee line to keep you stable. If you're propping on the chair or either place actually, take your fingertips to the chair seat, roll the shoulders back. The lower back is going to be flat or even a little concave. And then tip the pelvis forward. So it's kind of like you're shifting your weight to the front sitting bones. Keep your shoulders back. Keep your chin back. Your eyes settle to the back of the head. There will be a point in your body that you're stopping. That's your edge. Make sure you're pulling the right toes toward your body. And this is very stabilizing for the knee. So if a hip opener takes a toll on your knee, we always take a moment afterwards to kind of realign the knee, which is what we're doing. And you're gonna inhale and bring yourself upright again. Go ahead and step down. Let's see where we are here. Right, we're going to come into a crescent pose seated, but it's different than we've done before. So we don't need the second chair. We're going to sit in the chair with just that one block we're using today off to the right. So this version of the crescent pose is a little more spacious because we're gonna be bringing the bottom arm down to the block rather than grabbing onto the chair, which is what we usually do. So make sure you have a nice purchase of your seat in the chair. You're not going anywhere. You're not right on the edge. You have a nice amount of surface area. And we're gonna bring the hand down to the block and you can make it a fist if you don't like to do a lot of wrist flexion, you can be on your fist. So you're reaching for it. You're gonna have the shoulder right above the wrist. Inhale, raise the left arm, and then exhale, 
align the left arm with the side of the head. And of course, you know, if you have shoulder stuff, you can make that modified arm. The top arm can be modified by bending the elbow or um, not coming in as deeply as others might. So if the biceps right alongside the ear is too intense, you're not gonna, you're not gonna go there. So what we're trying to do here is you feel how the chest kind of uh, passively turns toward the floor. We're trying to resist that. So imagine someone's got their thumb on your right uh, lower corner of your right shoulder blade and they're just gently pushing that little shoulder blade corner toward your chest. Your top shoulder is starting to move back and it's like you're peeling the chest toward the ceiling. Yep, and you can do hand on hip. I think it will still work without the top arm. Okay, don't let the crown of the head dangle. Consider the top of the head as the exit point for the line of energy of the spine that begins at the tailbone and it moves all the way out through the top of the head. Some people find it helpful to turn and look at the ceiling, which kind of works to gently help your, your spine keep moving in that direction. Because remember what I said about the eyes driving us around. So we can use that to our advantage, looking up and continuing to work that gentle rotation. So this is a big, a big, it's not only a big lateral movement, but it's a big twist. So we wanna come out carefully. So start to turn your chest back toward the floor. You can drop that right arm or left arm, sorry, on your thigh. And then inhale and just bring yourself upright. Make sure you use your stomach muscles and just sit back against the chair for a moment. Put the shoulders in line with the hips, drop the shoulders. So because that was kind of a big experience, just let the dust settle. Sometimes I, again, with imagery, imagining the mind as we've all probably made at some point in our life, that little project where we have water and sand and sediment in a jar, we shake it up, it gets all cloudy and murky. And so now we're just letting that jar settle. The contents of the mind and the residuals of that pose, just letting it settle. Let the breath regulate if it became a little ragged. Ready, blinking the eyes open and second side. <clears throat> okay, so start with left hand coming down. Try to feel firm. So there's reason that pillars in buildings are vertical because they're more stable than diagonal. So really have your wrist underneath your shoulder. And if you're using a fist, it's your fist underneath your shoulder. Okay, and then we'll take the right arm up and just let it fall toward the ear. Remember the shoulder needs a little bit of <clears throat> some feedback here. Our shoulders are they're kind of very easily influenced. So they're probably following the fingertips. So plugging the shoulder back into the torso, pulling it away from the ear, away from the fingertips then the shoulder will be happy. It'll be confident in what you want it to do. <clears throat> and then your chest, feel how it pulls toward the floor. So you have to work to get your chest out of the shadows. Think about that thumb on your left shoulder blade, pushing little inner corner in the lower shoulder blade toward the chest. The top shoulder starting to roll back. Your eyes are maybe starting to track up toward the ceiling. The right hip, free it back down. It doesn't get to follow the arm either. Send the right hip back toward the chair. You should feel a little more opening, increase the side body here. Watch your eyebrows, that they aren't flying up. Watch your temples, that they remain soft, not hard. Jaw, soft, not hard. Facial skin, just a couple more breaths. And now we want to gently just let the chest turn back toward the floor, prop your right arm on your thigh, and then engage your core muscles and bring yourself up. And again, just sitting, letting the settlement, the, 
what, what's the word again? <laughs> sediment, not settlement. Sediment, letting it just start to settle. It helps to help that process of settling to point your gaze down. All right. So second chair is coming back into play here. Okay, so it's going to be off to your right side. So there's a pose in yoga called head to knee pose. We aren't going to be doing the legs, but this is a very similar kind of um, sensation that you'll get from head to knee pose. And we're also going to do the revolved version of the pose. So you'll hopefully get to feel both sides of the pose. One, we are in a deep forward bend, and one will feel very similar to the pose you just did, where we turned the chest toward the ceiling. So the first thing we want to do is get our torsos rotated as well as we can to the right toward that chair. Your legs are going to want to pull in that direction. So just kind of, you won't have it be perfect, but try to keep your knees pointing forward. And we're going to move our hands over to the chair seat. Okay, so you might use your tented up fingertips. You might need to elevate that seat somehow with some, something you have at home. It doesn't really matter as long as it's firm and it's not going to slide away on you. And so you're going to press your hands down and you might be able to use your arm against the outer right leg to help you turn your torso, revolve your torso. So this is another one of those great combination twists slash forward bends. So now from here, you're going to take yourself into the forward bend. So you might kind of just flatten down onto the palm. You might be able to walk the hands, you know, farther out beyond the shoulder line to bring your torso lower. You really have to gauge this yourself. And you're gonna use your hands in such a way that you're trying to bring that left shoulder down and right shoulder up. So you're just kind of bowing your head down. And if we have a, a good setup, you're, you might start to feel some sensation in the left lower back. Again, watch the shoulders if they're munching on the ears, we need more pressure in the hands. Keep using your hands in a way that you're kind of gently trying to draw the left shoulder forward, right shoulder back. And now to come into the revolving version of this, the right hand is gonna to move to the left side of the seat of the chair. The left hand will come to the back of your head. And so we've just taken away one of our kind of foundation points. So it's a little more effort into the sitting bones, into the one arm remaining with the chair. Reach up through the, the left elbow tip and start to turn your chest gently toward the ceiling. Press your head into your hand. Try to soften your face, soften your eyes. Take another inhale. And then on your exhale, you're going right back to the first position. Both hands down, stepping the right hand back over to the outside of the chair bowing as deeply as you can just for five breaths deep forward bend with some rotation and on an in breath you're going to gently come up once you're upright just sit with it shoulders back eyes closed dropping the shoulders like you've been hung up on a hanger. Soft gaze away from the brain. Soft abdomen. Relax or slacken the lower jaw. 
When we do this, sometimes it feels like we're lightly smiling. And then when you're ready, blinking the eyes open. We'll transfer the chair to the other side now. Just a reminder about twists. Sometimes people can hurt their backs in twists. So oftentimes the twists are, twist and forward bends are when we can hurt ourselves in yoga. So I want you to remember that it's really helpful in a twist to engage the lower abdominals. So think about your hip bones moving toward midline and all of your abdominals kind of working like particle board around the lower part of the spine. So all, all kind of gripping in toward midline. That stabilization will help you free up and mobilize upper spine where we don't get as often, we don't get injured. Most of our back injuries are down in the lower back where we over mobilize. So with these twists, just kind of keep that in mind. You're gonna be really cognizant of the lower abdominals engaging. And then you might also notice it frees up more twist happening in the thoracic and the dorsal spine, the cervical spine. So let's begin upright, just kind of moving our hands into a rough alignment, kind of shoulder width apart and not under the shoulders. You might be able to use that right arm against your leg to help you leverage more of a twist. And we like to get this twist going in an upright way before we fold forward. When you have your twist really kind of, you're at a good edge for yourself. You're gonna work with that. You're gonna walk the hands forward. You might still be able to use the right arm against the left leg to keep that twist established and maybe even continue going deeper into it. And with some deeper breaths, just see if you have a little tingling or sensation or kind of a waking up feeling in your right lower back. It's okay if you don't, but a lot of times we can get that here. Breath, awareness, and imagery. So a good image for twists is the spine like a glow stick. The spine loves to twist. It's our central energy channel. We can wake it up really efficiently with twists. So maybe imagining your spine, your favorite color, glowing brighter with every exhale. So finish your next exhale and on an in-breath, you're just gonna make that little transition where the left hand slides to the right. The right hand comes to the back of the head. We have this kind of kickstand arm here. We have to work it into the chair. We just took one arm away. So this arm has that's left has a lot more to do. We're pressing down firmly, make sure your sitting bones are deep into your chair seat. Reach up through your right elbow tip and also guide it gently back. Push your head into your hand. Use that support. Corkscrew the spine to the right. Grip those lower abdominals. No napping on the left shoulder. So keep your left shoulder moving toward the chair by keeping good pressure in your left hand. Okay, so twists make us really supple, but we wanna maintain length and not telescope the spine. So as we return to the forward bend, you're gonna inhale, remember those balloons between your vertebrae sets. Come all the way back to facing your chair, bringing both hands back onto the chair, shoulder width apart. Bow the head, just let your head fall. And just a few more deep surrendered breaths here. Let those exhales really go out. You're squeezing the breath from the body in your twist. So use that to your advantage, get all the exhale out. Such an easy way to detox is to use our exhales 
as fully as we can. And then remember to corset those stomach muscles, use an in-breath, rising up, coming out of that deep twist, shoulders back. And just letting the mind stuff settle, the breath regulate, feeling the residuals. Apt image here, Christmas tree. The spine is like the trunk goes all the way up to the point at the top. And everything connected to that through line softly descends toward the earth. So feel kind of the upward arrow of the central axis out through the crown. Everything to the periphery of the central axis, like soft pine boughs. Yoga is joining, connecting, union is the translation. And what we connect are a lot of oppositional energies in the body and we're able to kind of hold them in our mind at once. Bringing, bringing us into a really balanced state. If you have trouble kind of feeling the energies at the same time, it's fun to work with the breath, inhaling the upward energy channel, exhale the peripheral body parts, letting them descend toward the floor. All right, so we're going to blink the eyes open. Just want to take care of a little bit of uh, neck and shoulders, but we're going to do a little bit of a breathing exercise, and then we're just going to sit quietly for a couple minutes, and that's that's it. But because we're not going to be as active, you might want to um, grab some socks or an extra layer, just because it's not. I know where I am; it's getting chilly in the room. So the arc of a yoga practice should be taking you into kind of a meditative mind state and being cold is kind of antithetical to that. It would keep us kind of out in the outer world too much. So you're gonna be comfortable in your chair. Feel free to sit back against the back of the chair. Feel free to block your feet if you need a little more of a connection with the floor and drop the chin to the chest. And when you drop the chin to the chest, you're just going to take note of a few things. So you also want to sense the chest rising up toward the chin. Look toward your own cheeks. Keep the shoulders heavy and moving down toward the floor. And watch out for throwing your back into an overly arched position. When we open the chest like this, it can kind of have that effect on the lower back. We need to really kind of be careful about that. So bring your belly button to your spine. Take the tailbone into the soft tissue of the body. This position you're in is what we use for a lot of the breathing techniques that we do. But before we try one, we're just gonna loosen up the neck a little bit more. So just rolling your head to one side so your ear comes above your shoulder, doesn't matter which side you went to. And just kind of hang out on that side. Let the head, try to tap into the weight of the head. It's gonna help you open the side neck of that opposite side that you're not leaning toward. To add to this, you might not need to, but if you need a little bit more sensation on that long open side neck, extend the arm on that side. Rotate your palm to face toward me and then eventually maybe toward ceiling and create kind of energy streams out through all of the fingernails. So you're not just a dead hand hanging from a wrist. You're reaching out, your fingers are extended, they're not curled. 
extend your fingers like there's those little garden hoses off each fingertip and then just a couple sweeping breaths into the side neck this time of year we have, a lot of us have extra um, stress we're also cold so those two things alone are really they kind of gang up on the neck area we shrug the shoulders to stay warm when we're anxious we carry a lot of that in our neck and shoulders so just a couple really intentional breaths here. If you did extend the arms, bring the hand back to the left. Roll your chin back toward your chest. Keep rolling the head gently to the other side. With the head to one side, make sure you didn't dump all your weight to that side sitting bone that you're balanced between the two. And then just do some investigation. Do you need to extend the arm? Sometimes we have enough going on here. If you need a little more, extend the arm 45 degrees from the shoulder to the fingertips. Palm forward, maybe tilting the pinky finger up, the thumb down, the palm toward the ceiling. Add the breath, deep sweeping breaths. If you did extend the arm, go ahead and bring your hand back to your leg. Go ahead and roll the head back to center. And then inhale, lift your head up. Okay. So we're going to do alternate nostril breathing today. I roll my shoulders out. Um, if you have a stuffy nose, you don't want to do pranayama techniques that block the nostrils. Um, that being said, if you have a mildly stuffy nose, this technique can actually help open you up in the nostril. So if it's completely blocked, don't do it. Um, just do a seated breath awareness practice while we're doing Nadi Shodhana, the alternate nostril breathing. If you need to clear your nostrils beforehand, go ahead and grab Kleenex, blow your nose. That can always be useful. So the idea is to take the breath in one nostril and to release it out the other. And then we'll do it, taking it in the new side and out the other side. So we're raising, we're kind of bringing the breath into one and out the other is the visualization, which can be helpful if you get a little bit mixed up. No matter what hand you write with, it's always practice with the right hand um, as your working hand. So what you want to do is fold, um, just lost my technique here, fold the uh, index and middle fingers in. So the other three fingers, the pinky ring and thumb are extended. When you fold those two fingers in, the idea is that you leave enough space to work between the thumb and the ring finger as your blocking fingers, as your nostril blocking fingers. Then you don't have the other two fingers kind of getting in your way. So it's always nice to know why we're doing things, I think. So this is a mudra, it's called a hand position, a mudra. One thing to know about this arm is you don't want to pin the elbow against the side body. The armpit is considered a really kind of vital energy pocket in the body. And if we clamp the elbow against the side body, we suffocate that. So you can work with a tennis ball if you want to really master this technique, or you can just imagine you have a tennis ball in your armpit. And even after I've practiced for years, I still have to remember to lift my elbow out because it does tend to kind of want to just drop into your side body. So go back to your chest lifted, chin lowered position. And then go back to your tennis ball idea. We're going to inhale both nostrils, top of the breath, closing your right nostril with your thumb. Exhale out the left. Inhale through the left. Close at the top of the breath with the ring finger. Empty out the right. Inhale the right. Close at the top of the breath, empty out the left. Inhale the left. So the way you can start to work with a stuffy nose is if the side that you're working with is open, use your free finger, whether it's the ring or the thumb, to pull that flesh away from the nostril to create a bigger nostril cavity. You'll get more capacity into that nostril and you might be able to work through some of that stuffiness. 
Okay, so hopefully you're still going here while I just took a detour. Exhale and inhale. And I don't like to guide pranayama because we're all probably on our own rhythm now. So I don't want to kind of clutter up your process with language that isn't really where you are. But hopefully you get the idea to inhale the free side, close it at the top, empty the new side. Watch out for that elbow that likes to pin against your side body. Keep your chest lifted. Keep your eyes lowered or even closed. Just three more breaths here. Complete inhale, exhale. Next time you exhale, you can release your right hand 